Uh, we're continuing our series called I Doubt It. We've been going over a couple things of doubt. The first week we talked about what to do with doubt. And now last week we talked about who created God. That was, that was intense, man. Does anyone remember one thing from that? One thing. Throw me a bone. Anyone remember one thing? We can remember who won some basketball games and things like that. But when it comes to church, can we remember what happened a week ago? Yes. What's that? Yeah, what about it? Can you talk about it? Yes. Okay, okay. I'll take it. Yes, sir. That God is out of time. God is outside of time. Okay. Can we ever understand that? Interesting. Yes. Is that like make sense to you? Wow. You're you're ahead of the game. Ahead of the game. That's that's a tough one. Yeah. Gav, doggy, dog. Good job, dude. God is three in one. Bailey. We have an inner sense and an outer sense. Oh, tell me what you mean by that. An inner sense and an outer sense. What does that mean? An inner sense is like when we say we love him, but we never met him. Mm. And then outer sense is like nature and everything in it. Cool. Right on. Right on. Hey, give yourselves a round of applause. Give yourselves a round of applause. What is that clapping, clapping day? Awesome. Well, t- tonight... Uh, man, how do, I, how do I put this? This is a question that a lot of people have had. In fact, some of the, the most famous people have had this. If you haven't thought this, I'm sure you all have thought this question I'm about to say right now. This is something that everyone thinks about at some point in their life. I have a buddy of mine. Uh, I've told you many, many times. I'm like a broken record, I know. I have friends of, that believe all different things. I have friends that don't believe in anything. And this is a, a topic that, that I get asked a lot. Have any of you ever been to a funeral before? Okay, this is something that comes up during that time. And the the topic of today, the title of today's message, if you're taking notes, I highly encourage that. It is, is there an afterlife? Is there an afterlife? That's today's title, is there an afterlife? For me, if I wasn't a believer, this topic right here would be, it makes the most sense to me that there is a God. This right here, to me, points that there is a greater creator, a greater being than anything we could ever dream or think of. Logically, if you're a logical thinker, this points to God. I have, a, I have friends that, uh, well, one in particular, that believes that nothing happens when you die. That when you die, your eyes close, and it's like before you were born. And there's nothing that happens after that. It's like before you're born. You don't remember that, do you? I have a friend that believes that when you die, you go to a place. And in that place, you have a second chance to do the right things. And then you can get into paradise. I have friends that believe that when you go there, um, there's some things I can't really share, but there's a lot of different things out there. So is there an afterlife? What does happen when you die? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, that's what we're going to discuss today. Is there an afterlife? There's going to be a point in our lives where you take your last breath, unless the Lord returns. Unless the Lord returns, spoiler alert, every single one of us are going to die. The oldest person in the Bible, does anyone know how old that person lived to be? Hint, he's in Genesis. His name is Methuselah, Pastor Joshua. Is his dad 982? Close. Yes. Huh? No. Come on, come on, let's do another one. Try another one. Yeah. 963. Oh, dude, that was really close. Okay, Andrew, go ahead. 967? Dude, you are the closest one that there is. 968. Close. (laughs) Close. 972. Nope, nope. 969. 969, that's, that's the oldest person. So guess what? You can live to be 969 years old, but guess what's going to happen? You're still going to die. Cool. You live to be 969. Did you escape death? No. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Is there an afterlife? There is now because of sin. God's original intention was to us for live, to live forever until sin came into the world. And now there has to be something. There has to be something. So let's take a look in your Bibles. Everyone turn to the book of Hebrews. Always bring your Bible because it's so good to open up God's Word. So good to open up God's Word. And when you go to churches, it's good that the pastors read from God's Word. But open up.
to Hebrews chapter 9. And we're going to look at verse 27. What does the Bible say about the afterlife? When you close your eyes for the last time. Is there an, what's the point to living right now? Hebrews chapter 9. Is that the Old or the New Testament? It's the New Testament. It's towards the back of the Bible. In fact, this is really cool. In books now, there's this really, really cool new invention called a table of contents. So when you get at the beginning of your book, it tells you the book title and then what page it's on. Super cool. Super good. Hashtag just joshing. So in the in your front of your Bible, new invention, table of contents. Check out Hebrews. Go to that page. And there you're going to find it in the New Testament towards the back. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Now, if we believe that the Bible is God's word, then we know that there is something couple things that God can't do. That, that usually when people say there's nothing God can't do, there are things God can't change. He can't lie. He can't sin. So God cannot lie. So if we are reading from God's word, then we know that this is true. So what does the Bible say about death and the afterlife? If you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I love it. Okay, let's check it out. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. It says this. I'm reading from the NLT. It'll be up on the screen as well. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, sorry ladies, that's you too. And after that comes judgment. There is an appointed time. Your, your life is written out already. There is a time where you are going to die. Unless the Lord comes back. But there is a time, and it's already appointed. It is already written. It is already done. Your days are numbered like... The Wicked Witch of the West, man, she used to scare me so bad. I had nightmares of her and her little flying monkeys, man. I still get like a little PTSD when I see a monkey every now and then. But when she flips that hourglass and she says, your time's coming, that's us. So something else, side note, what do you want to do with the time that you've been given? Are the, the big deals in your life really a big deal when you think of it like that? Or maybe the little things are the biggest deals. Maybe the little things are what we're supposed to focus on. How we're spending that time. Because each minute then is precious. Each minute matters. Each second matters. You waking up matters. That's the biggest blessing of all, right? The biggest blessing of all is waking up. And your time has started when you entered this world. And there's a point where you are going to die. So there is something that we do know is that we on earth are going to die. The Bible says it. And then it says this, after that comes judgment. <gasps> Hashtag only God can judge me. Okay, let's see what that really looks like, right? Okay, so we're going to die. The Bible's clear on that. In fact, there's no one that we know that hasn't died, okay? There's no one that we know that hasn't died except there's two people in the Bible, but I didn't know them. There's two people mentioned in the Bible that didn't die. But we're going to die, and now there's judgment. Oh, great. Well, I'm a good person, so it'll be cool, man. I should be good. My, I, I, I'll be good. So in your Bibles, let's go to the book of Matthew. Is that the Old or the New Testament? Yeah. First book of the New Testament. It was named after me. So this is Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Let's look, look at verse 46. Matthew 25. Look at verse 46. So what happens is we're going to die, and then there's going to be some judgment after that. Well, this should be fun. For me to see how God's could judge other people because I'm not as bad as everyone else. So let's take a look. Matthew 25, verse 46, says this, And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. So it's talking about, uh, Matthew 25, verse 46 says, they will go away. So right before that, it's talking about uh, people that don't know the Lord. There's a place that's going to have eternal punishment, which is a place called hell. That is a real place. Hell is a real place. But the righteous, everyone say but. but. That's right. Because why? Yeah, we, we heard Jesus loves big buts. Isn't that what, what we learn in, in the big? But, this is, the, this is a good thing. The righteous will go into eternal life. Now, this is the part where we see that there is an afterlife. There's a point that has already been decided that you're going to take your last breath. And what happens after that? Well, you're either going to have eternal punishment or you're going to have eternal life. The choice is yours. If I left that up to you in this room, I guarantee you every hand would be like, oh, eternal life, duh. Okay, this is the part that's tricky that a lot of my friends don't understand. A lot of people, 
believe that they are going to heaven when they die. A lot of you raise your hands that you've been to a funeral. Never once have I been to a funeral when they said, well, he's in hell right now. <laughs> Never once. Everyone's always in a better place. They're looking down on us right now. They're in a better place. Haven't got a good one right now. An angel. He's an angel, man, looking over you. When you feel the wind, that's his breath on your neck. <laughs> when the sun rises, you see your shadow. That's him walking by you. Everyone's always in the better place. No one ever wants to say that someone's in hell or not in the good place. But how many of us think about that about other people that are bad or wicked? We think those things, don't we? Isn't that sad? Okay, so there's, there's two places. Well, how do I get to the good one? How do I get to eternal life? You know, I was joking when I said, you know, I, I'm better than, than other people, so they're going to go to hell. That, that's, that's not how it works. I have a cousin. I have a cousin that believes I am a good enough person to get to heaven. I don't need to follow anyone or believe in anything to get there. There's no way that if there's a God that when I die, there's no way he would not let me into his gates. I will pound on those gates till he lets me in because I have done good. Here's a question. What is good? Every single one of us in here have a different standard of good. Whose standard is good? There's someone that could say, I'm a good person. I've never told a lie. Well, I could say, okay, listen, listen. I've told a lie before, but I'm a good person. I've never stolen anything. Well, listen, I've, I've lied, I've stolen something, but I'm a good person. I've never murdered someone. Well, listen, I, I've lied, I've stolen something. I murdered someone, but guess what? I didn't rape anyone. Well, okay, and then it goes on and on, doesn't it? There's always a reason how you justify that you're a good person. But who's, whose decision is it in the end? Who is the final judge? Because when we stand before God, I'm saying when. Every single one of us in this room are going to stand before him. I'm not answering for you. 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 I'm not going to say, listen, God, come on. It's between me and Andrew. Come on. This is, this is a no-brainer. It's Andrew. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's not who I'm there for. I'm not going to stand before the, 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 the people that have murdered people. I'm not going to be standing before them. I'm saying physically murdered. I'm not going to say, God, come on. Is this, is this really, come on, is this really like even a thought? Come on, let me in. Come on. Come on. Come here. Really? That's not how it works. Because Jesus took it a step further when he came to earth. He was a game changer. Everyone say game changer. game changer. He was a game changer. He said it's not just taking someone's life that makes you a murderer. It's even thinking those things. It's even hate. If you have hate in your heart towards someone, the judgment's the same. Now who's the murderer in the room? Ooh. Well, listen, I've never done adultery. Oh, come on. If you even looked at someone with lust, you've committed adultery. No one in here can raise their hand to that one, huh? No, I'm just kidding. Every single one of us in this room, I'm, I'm a majority, I would say 90% of us in this room are lying, adulterous murderers. <laughs> and hey, here's the cool thing. And isn't that cool that we're at church and this is a place for us to come to? It's not a place ever where we're going to think that we're better than anyone. It's not a place that we think, oh, look at them high and mighty. No, we're broken. That's why we're here. We are messed up. That's why we're here. But it has nothing to do with how good of a person you are that's going to get you to heaven. That's the whole point of Christianity is us saying I'm not good enough to get there because I mess up every single day. I need a Savior. I can't do this on my own. I can't go through one day without sinning. I can't. I got one of these. Somewhere in there. It's hollow. I got two of these. I got one of these. And sometimes I think I'm good enough. How many people miss it? Because we all think that we're good enough to get there. But what I want us to do now is just go a couple gospels over to the book of John. John chapter 11. See, this is where my friends and my family, some of my family just don't get it. It has nothing to do because whose standard is it? Whose standard is it of good? So how do you even get to heaven? So go to John chapter 11. 
John chapter 11. It's the New Testament. It goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. John chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 25. So now we see that there is going to come a point where we're going to die. There's going to be a hell. There's going to be a heaven. You're going to stand before God, and he's going to say which one you're going to. So how do I get there? How many times, you know, I have, I have this thing called the, an interview with the devil. I never suggest anyone ever do that. An interview with the devil. If the devil came up here and he stood next to me, because if I said to you right now, hey, what does it take to get to heaven? 80% of you would say, oh, I be believe in Jesus. Believe, believe. Okay. The demons believe that there's a God. The demons know that Jesus is coming back. When Jesus went to go save Legion, they said, what are you interfering with us before your appointed time? They know he's coming back. They know that he's going to die. They know that. They know the scriptures. If the devil came up here and I was talking with him and I said, hey, do you believe Jesus Christ is the son of God? Yes. Okay, hold on. Uh, do you believe that the Bible is God's actual words? Yes. Okay, do you believe that Jesus is coming back to save his people? Yes. Okay, no further questions. I'm sorry. What makes us different than the devil? What is the difference? How do I get to heaven? Because if it's about just believing in God, okay, good. Satan knows there's a God. He acknowledges that. He understands. He wants to be him. He wants to be better than him. But there is a difference. Satan really believes he can be God. Satan hasn't surrendered his life. There's a thing called repentance. Everyone say repentance. Repentance. That word needs to come to the church quite a bit, doesn't it? The word repentance, that's a big missing key. If you don't hear that at church that often, you need to hear it. Repentance, it means to turn around, to turn away from. Uh, military term right here, if you're always to repent, that means I'm walking one way, and I do one of these. Whoop, repent, go the complete opposite direction. I got to repent for the sins I've done, repent for my sinful life. The way that I'm walking is towards death, away from God. A hell that is away from God. But when I ask God into my life and I say, you're the God of my life. You're my Savior. I can't keep going this way. I got to repent and go towards Him. Am I going to fumble along the way? Yes, because I'm not God. But I have Christ living in me and just like the cracked pot in my weaknesses, He's going to show His strength and I can continue to go towards the cross, not the world. So I can't do this alone. I need Jesus in my life. But I still need people to do life with. That's why church is important, by the way. It's good to come together because it's good to have friends walking alongside you because we're not meant to go through life alone. But how do we get to heaven? Right here, Jesus says this. Look at John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus is talking to, to Martha. And he says this. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Yes, there is an afterlife, Jesus says. There's going to be a life where you can live. Even after you're dead, guess what? You're not really dead. You're alive and you're actually living for the first time. Here on earth, this isn't a real life. It matters what we do here, but this is just temporary to the place that we're going. One day we're going to wake up and this life that we're living in has been a dream. The Bible tells us it's like, it's like fog. It's there one minute and gone the next. This life is going to go by like that. All that money that we worked hard to make isn't going to make a difference. All the girls that some of us have been chasing doesn't make a difference. The success that we wanted, our TikTok followers, really, that's not going to go anywhere. Because we're going to stand before the Lord and He is going to see you. And what's He going to see? Because this is the key. Ready? This is the key. It says, anyone who believes in me, look at verse 26. Everyone who lives in me and believers in me will never die. To believe in him, but to have him into your life, to, to have him be the center of your life, living for him, he says this. Do you believe this, Martha? Underline that, highlight that, put your name there where it says, Martha, do you believe this? Do you believe this, Matt? Do you believe that I'm the resurrection? See, Jesus died, but it didn't stop there. He rose again, conquering death, so that we won't have to have that separation from him. He died, but he lived. And now he's really living. He's got it. He's perfect before, but now guess what? He's living, and he's all around. He's living in us now. And we're going to stand before him. And there will be an afterlife. 
if you have Jesus living in you and you've repented from your old ways and go towards the cross, I got good news from you. I got great news for you. There is an afterlife and you get to enjoy it. But it has nothing to do with being a good person. Nothing. There's nothing good enough that you could do to ever get in there. And unfortunately, there are people that aren't there. I think we're going to be very surprised by who we see there. Do you believe this? There is an afterlife, and it's only by Christ, not by anything we've done, because if it's all about us and our good works, then we become our own God. And for my friends and my family out there that believe that there is no God, then what's the point to living? If you believe that there is no afterlife, then your life is pointless. That's a bold statement, isn't it? If you don't believe in the life after death, then why, the, why are we alive? What is the point? That's an empty life. I've had buddies call me contemplating suicide because they said, what's the point of life? And I've told them, that's a good place that you're at right now. Unfortunately, that's, that's hard to say that. That's a good place that you're at because now you're actually thinking, what is the point of life? And you realize it's not drugs, it's not money, it's not sex, it's not alcohol, it's not any of this stuff. But you realize that that's not good enough. You realize that there's something more. And it's, you got to give all that up to say, I want the one thing that can fill my heart. And if there's no God, then why don't we just do whatever we want right now? <laughs> Who do we have to answer to? What's stopping me from going out there robbing whatever convenience stores I want? <laughs> A little jail time, but who cares? I got to live it up. Who cares? Think about it. If there's no point to life, if there's no afterlife, then there's no point to our existence. Like we talked about last week, everything points to God. There's going to be a time in our lives where we take our last breath and we're going to stand before the Lord. Do you believe this?